Right, hello everybody. Welcome to the stream. Let's go live. Hello. How's it going? So glad you're all here. It's going to be a fun afternoon. Uh, I have all the footage that Valerio has sent me. Um, got about half an hour of footage. So we'll be going through it all. Um, as you can see, lots of nice camera angles high up, some quality footage from down low. And then at the end, we've got yeah, this game against Team White with Black Shorts. So yeah, half an hour footage. Probably take about an hour and a half, two hours maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've got some notes from your coach about um, you know what what he noticed in in the in the in the points that that are filmed. So I'll read them out as we play through the points for the first time. Thank you, Dan, for filming. Uh, hello, Daniel. Hello, Spiritual Melon. Valerio's there. Hello. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Max. Hey, Dylan. You're the first one other than me and Valerio. Good to see you all. Uh, let's get started. If at any point you've got any uh, questions, then, you know, I encourage there to be, you know, some discussion and ask me questions in the chat. I'll, I'll check it after every single point and, and during as well if I can. Um, and if you want any clarification or something, like if I've said something or you're not too sure about it or you think I might have missed something um, or, you you know, or if you really agree with something, then, yeah, just use, use the chat. Hey, Sandin, good to see you. Um, yeah, make use of the, of the chat function. You see it comes up in the bottom of the screen just here. So I've got my mouse. I've got my mouse that I can use to highlight what's going on on the field as well. Should make it easy to see what I'm talking about. Let me just adjust this. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Hello, Miles. Hello. How's it going? All right. Let's get straight into it. Um, so there went. There isn't any um, sound on the game footage, uh, which is good. It can be. It can be a bit distracting. All right. So in this point. Um, Valerio says, attack the break side before the mark is on. Oh, uh, almost. Attack the break side before the mark is on, instead of forming a full stack. Walker should try both the around and the inside out before they play give and go with Noah. <clears throat> so, here we are. We've got we've got three players around here. Okay, so we've got the options of, of moving the disc. It goes back and then we're set. Okay, and, and we've got the stack being set here. Um, so there, there was potentially a chance of actually working the disc over to this side if this player comes back, but he's the, the stack setter, so he's got his job. Um, could have could have kind of kept the flow going at the beginning of the point and worked the disc onto what ends up being the break side. I suppose at that point you don't really know that it's going to be the break side. Um, so yeah, dump is getting in position, okay, and then the stack is set. Now we have a nice cut here, so you can see he sets it up, he goes break side. Okay, this gesticulation, uh, you can just be ready to throw. If you just have the disc in both hands, just be ready to throw um, whatever, whatever you know, presents itself in front of you. Okay, now I, I like that you're stepping out to fake that, but I think, I think you're not really believing that you're going to throw that. And, and I think the defenders don't believe you're going to throw it really either. So. The first, the first look normally, um, when somebody cuts break side like that, is to actually go for the inside out option first. Okay, um, I'm going to try and draw on the screen a little bit. Um, hey Mike, hey Marcus, hey Ben, how's it going guys? Join, welcome to the stream, join the chat, get chatting. Um, so let me see if I can just draw on the screen. Okay, what does that look like? Uh, what does that look like? There we go, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, usually the first option is for the inside out, okay? If you, if you step out and threaten that inside out sidearm, okay, then, then the force will move over this way, all right? Um, and then that will open up 
then later on, oopsie, <laughs> then that will open up later on for the option of that around, okay? The force will have moved over, so then the possibility of throwing around here is more likely. Okay, so just as a general rule, if someone gets through on the brake side, fit the inside out, or go go for the inside out first. If the force stops it, then you should have the around. Okay, this is a nice a nice amount of separation that we got here. Okay, so so we should be making use of that to attack the brake side. Okay. So boom, there it is. And yeah, even if even if you kind of even if you just released it out wide and high, then potentially it could, uh, potentially the disc could, you know, come out to this space over here. <clears throat> when the cutter cuts break side, can he cut wider? Um, the problem with cutting wider is that it gives the defender a more a better angle. If the defender is able to to run kind of more more towards, he can intercept the disc. So if the cutter goes out wide, it basically opens up this window here that the defender can go into. Um, so I, I quite like. Let's have another look at the angle. Yeah, I like I like that angle. Yeah, he's got he's got good separation. Um, <clears throat> Okay, Josh is watching on behalf of Adam. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Um, let's have a look at the next. Okay, so then after, so what I do like is after that fake, you immediately look to then take the take the open pass over here. Okay, and this is this is actually a really good technique, throwing that and and going into a run immediately. And that's really good, uh, really good form. Um, I generally try to avoid turning my back to. Uh, the the field so at this point you know you've got your back to the field but uh like to the other to the other players um but it you know you, you use it quite well to actually then take the momentum and, and go straight into the into the give go style move okay can't really see what's going on there the huck comes uh one of the problems with this huck is that the space that this receiver has is very limited okay so they're looking over this shoulder so really, the space you're, you're, you're asking the thrower to put it in is, oh yeah, I see it's behind the, the chat window. So you look, you're asking the thrower to put the disc in this kind of space here, okay, um, which is quite a small amount of space. If you look over the other side, then, then potentially, you know, you've got, oops, <laughs> then you've got all of the, uh, the rest of the end zone to aim at. That's not particularly good drawing, is it? Yeah. Um, so th there's a rule of thumb about don't don't huck to the same third. Yeah. So if you have the the thrower in one third, so the throwers if you draw if you draw a line down the line down here, and line down here, then if the thrower is in this third, then you shouldn't huck to this third. Okay. But you can huck to this third or this third. Okay. Um, a lot of that is because yeah, this is a narrow channel over here. So it's quite tricky to get that to get that throw um, into the right place in a catchable way. <clears throat> and they don't want to be on the brake side of the handler for a better upline cut. Uh, chocolate to chocolate, I'm not sure what that means. Um, the dump is best on the on the open side. Yeah, so so forty five degrees back on the open side. Um, it means that the the force can't affect anything between, and if the dump gets free going behind, okay, um, then then they then they can move the disc onto the brake side. So they either cut behind, so they get the disc moving onto the brake side, or they go forwards on the open side into like a power position. Um, so generally, it works better if you're forty five degrees back on the open side. Um, cut right down the middle. Well, okay. So at this point, so you're making you're making the deep cut here, right? Yeah, the problem is that, yeah, you, you've 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 bent down. You've you've bent around that corner there. As you go around that corner, that then starts to limit the amount of space that you have. 
Okay. Um, and at that point, instead of looking over your right shoulder, I'd, I'd even maybe look over the left shoulder. Um, because, yeah, you're asking the thrower to put it in that tiny little space. And you see then, yeah, the thrower has it fade into the middle of the pitch, which is better than fading out of the pitch. And, uh, yeah, it hits the hand, so we're unlucky in the end. But, yeah, it's, it, 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 was a, it was a cut that was asking the, the thrower to throw it to a very small space, basically. Uh, chocolate to chocolate, same same idea as the third of the field. Okay, yeah, just uh, that's the way it's explained where I've played. Um, about the same third. All right, on to the next point. If you have any, um, if there's any technical issues or anything, just let me know. Um, right, so this point, the first cut, first cut in the break side. First cut in the break side instead of the open side. Noah looks at the quick break before the marker is set. Okay, I didn't see that. So. Yeah, so that, that's an execution error on the throw. Um, you're unmarked here at the moment. So. You don't need to to sprint you're not running away from anyone you know you could just be hanging out in this space at the moment Though you've got to be careful of that because you've got to be aware that there's no defender knee but yeah your defender's right the way over here so um the break side yeah this this defender is is busy here so if you go break side then the throw could come through here and if this defender stops that throw then the throw can go here and then out to here and you, you can come over this way yeah I, I don't I, I don't think I need to draw on the screen for that so yeah if the defender comes in here then this space is blocked and the disc can go choo, choo, around the edge and you can continue over here um, it's it's not certain which way the force is at this point so yeah it's not it's not it's not it's not bad going going open side there um, and it's hard to be aware of where the defender is um, this throw uh, I mean that's very kind of it's it's good technique for like a throw with a tight mark um you know that needs to be like quite a far throw or something but i think maybe because you're trying to throw it gently then then it makes the execution harder but in reality if the cut is here and you have all this space then you just need to just pop the disc out you know even like a lefty backhand it doesn't need to be a, a wide pivot with like perfect form you know that sometimes that can actually be a detriment you know just keep your balance pop the disc out and be ready for the next move um is there anything else on that point okay you knew the other team was forcing flick the whole time okay that's handy information you should have let me try greatest would it be possible to greatest this one Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he definitely should have let you try the greatest. That's poor, poor sideline behavior. <laughs> I've had it before where I was, I, was at, I was in the process of laying out. It was a really high bladey catch. And I was in the process of laying out to toe it in um, off the side of the pitch. And my teammate just, just caught it. <laughs> I landed on the floor next to him. I'm like, what are you doing? But yeah, that's uh, that is very poor sideline behaviour to catch that because you're very close to it and you get your foot right, don't you? You got your foot exactly, yeah, yeah, your foot's just in, within arm's reach. Yeah, he should have let you try and greatest. Okay. All right, defense. Have we got any notes on defense? Um. Yeah, it seems like this. This uh, you don't want to be walking at this point. You don't want to be walking. You kind of, kind of caught. You're caught flat-footed. Um, he's putting his arm out. He's putting his left arm out here. I don't know if you can see that, but you know, I know ultimate. That guy's definitely putting his left arm out to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm free over here. But then that's just to draw you in. I mean, it is an option as well, but it's not as deadly an option as beating you up the line. So yeah, stay on your toes. Protect that, 
protect that open side space up the line. This comes across. Yeah, if if they can if they can throw it to the to the the deep side break corner at any point, then yeah, against one to one defense, that's going to be that's going to be a score more times than it's not. Um, yes, di dictate on defense indeed. Choose choose what you want him to do. Yeah, so at this point, maybe you should be you should be thinking, okay, I don't mind if you have to run back back to your own end zone and get the disc out around here. You know, allow that to an extent. You can't stop everything. So as soon as you start walking to to cover it, then he's going to take the other thing that you get that that you give him. It all balances out. Um, okay, this clip we score on the open side. Hooray! It's better if Kiva on the dump is 45 degrees on the open side. Elijah makes the inward pivot and looks break first and stack push deep earlier. That's nice timing on that first cut. Um, yeah, but uh, true about true about the break. Three. So, uh, uh, sorry, true about the dump. So, over here. Yeah, he in fact he moves across. So this is quite good. What I was what I was trying to say earlier. So, if the disc was in here and 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 you're therefore positioned in the correct place, by by making that move, <laughs> right? By making that move across, all right. Then you'll receive the disc here. Okay, your defender will be coming from this angle. All right, and then you have the whole break side for like a second or two to look at. So then you can initiate flow on the break side. Um, and if the if the defender stops that, okay. So if they come in and mark you like here then you can run up here and it can be a bit of a tricky throw that one but it's possible then you get the disc here and now you can have a, a deep cut going cool. let me know if you uh, if you've got any questions about that Okay, Elijah's inward pivot. I want to see this. Yeah, nice. So a lot of players, when they catch like this, will actually pivot around this way. Yeah, but if you do that, then this is what you see. Yeah, all this useless um, sideline stuff. I mean, I've got. A... <laughs> um, so it's better to uh, it's better to pivot inwards, as Elijah does here. So. As he pivots, then he's facing the whole of his team, and he can see exactly what's going on with everybody immediately. Uh, this this deep cut or like this run deep here, slightly slightly going diagonally. So um, it's good to generally it's good to cut deep straight. So if you're going at an angle, then you're making this the space the space for the thrower smaller and smaller. Okay, um, but if you go, if you went straight, that's not really straight. If you went straight, then the space would be a bit bigger. Okay. Um, and then comes under. Yeah, that's nice. Just beats beats his player athletically. Here, here we go. It's, it's the same. It's the same thing again with the angles. All right from this point here. Right, it's great to get that body position. Okay, um, running across, then the defender can actually. The defender's quite close. And is able to kind of if the disc is in this kind of area, the defender's got it right. But the offense is running that way, so really you're thinking about this for the score. <laughs> um, and in the end, the disc loops over um, a bit to the break side. Okay. Um, so I think when this cut starts, it's better if it's 
if it's directly away. And then and then the disc can go can go anywhere at the back of the end zone for the score. Yeah, it's a nice throw. It's a nice throw. Uh yeah, we don't think it's messing up the angles, you know. It's uh it's just little tweaks to, to make the make the cut cuts easier to throw to, really. At the end of the day you're just trying to make things easier for your teammates, everyone's trying to do their best and make life easier for each other. Uh, let's have a let's have a read of, of, what, of what the chat is. Um, what team was this against? Utah, Marcus thinks. Um, yeah, I think this is against Utah. The Swedish. What's the uh, what's the Swedish throw, Valerio? Swedish. I know the German is the German is throw is where the defender's not looking and the cutter doesn't cut and you just throw the throw out. Swedish. I think we used to think that was um was it a really short throw? What was it? Oh ended on the break set. Ah, so a throw that a throw that starts on the open side and curls over to the break side. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's something I just noticed with the catch. Um, so it's trailing edge, which is quite a difficult catch. I think that's close enough to your body that you could you could get your left hand out there and clap catch. For me, that for me that suggests that you're very right hand dominant on your on your catches, um, and it could be worth practicing just catching left handed for a while and then and then practicing clap catching because clap catching is definitely the safest. Um, training edges is a bit riskier. I mean, it's riskier if you. It's less risky if you you know if you've got really good control over your right hand. But if you if you get good control over your left hand, then clap catch is safer. Um, okay, what are the notes on this point? Oh, they score good communication to help Andrew holding the correct force. David could have tried to stay closer to the receiver instead of attacking. So much the disc. Okay, we we'll have to we'll have to speed up a bit because uh, we're only a few points in. There's so much to talk about though. Um, okay, so they check the disc in. Simple under, that's okay. Gives it back. Yeah, right, 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 right. Go right, go right. Yeah, there we go. So that was the communication helping him with the force. Okay, let's have a let's have a look at that last throw. Hmm, okay. Alright, so the the actually the deep cut starts from off the field over here. Uh this this defense though, um when the disc is so far away better to drop deep a bit um, because if you're dictating on defense then you're you're dictating what they're allowed to do as well as what they're not allowed to do um, you can't stop everything so it is important to choose what what you're happy with and getting so if they get the disc over here okay on like a big swing and maybe that's a hammer you've got a good chance of you know getting an interception however if they get a tiny bit free deep of you yeah then uh they manage to just use those yards and then just accelerate then it's going to be a score potentially so yeah contain the damage yeah like like here like this is good you know like it's 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 not so bad if he gets it kind of underneath or it's a tricky throw through into the middle of the field Stopping the deep. This is good tight defense as well. Yeah, I mean the receiver does well here to to kind of box out, lead lead the defender the other way. Okay, this point, uh, Kiva in the dump is good positioning, forty five degree open side, but he moves before Marcus engages with him. 
eye contact from the handler should initiate the dump movement. Everyone stands and then cuts straight to one side without V cuts, overlapping in the open side. Uh, Josiah, player in the back, should see he's running into the same space. Marcus, the thrower, should have uh, could make a better decision um, because the stall is less than six. Okay, let's have a look now. All right, this gets bricked, does it? Okay, so it's bricked. Comes in. Yeah, so that that movement's unnecessary. Hmm, looks familiar to the other point. Um, better just to stay here until until initiated. Um, and then what's happened downfield? Hmm, well, that that cuts very hard to hit because it's very far away. Um, this is a nice move, but the thrower has already seen something else he wants to hit. Yeah, so we have a couple of cuts going onto the break side. Um, too many cuts at the same time. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, Valerio, I'll follow that. I'll follow that priority. Um, okay, Melon, spiritual Melon says, was it smart for me to move back before the deep throw? Was that on the previous? Was that on the previous one? Is it smart to move back before the deep throw? Uh, yeah, generally there's just there's too much movement here. The thrower should be able to just kind of focus in on one person. Everyone else should look to see whether that person's free, whether they get in the disc. The dump is moving a bit quick. I mean, a bit early as well. Um, yeah, and then the, and then the defense just come through. Okay, let's move on to the next. Um, I will. No, maybe getting a little bit more in the open side before cutting back onto the break, your window. Um, so is this another here we're talking about? Um, because I was looking at it and I and I like. I like the timing, you know. The defender does well to kind of half allow the open side. And then be ready for the break. Um, but the defender, you see, doesn't have to commit to following that break because the throw is not looking. <clears throat> yeah, if the thrower if the thrower looks to attack the break side, then it then it opens up much easier open side options. So even even just now, the thrower should be looking at this this player over here and thinking, if I can throw the disc here, then that can be that can be a completion. And then and then maybe just hit this player. And then if that's not on, then maybe this one. But yeah, we have the open side cut, but there's there's no stack anymore. <laughs> it's a big gap. Okay. Um, all right. Skip this point. Skip this point. And now this should be the point where they play a zone, right? And it takes a while to recognize. Um, and then an execution error. We should dump earlier to avoid getting trapped by the cup on the sideline. On defense, a clear example. Elijah, 35 seconds of wine never turning and giving your back to the person you're covering. Always turn inside if it's facing the opponent. Yep, that's solid, solid advice. Let me, let me just rewind so I can look through it. Comment as I see it. Okay, so at this point, it should be clearly a zone, yeah. So the so the stack should spread. Um, <clears throat> I'd probably I'd probably take that open pass. Okay, and and this player could be more active. As soon as that disc goes, then you've got all this space in front of you. Yeah, space is the most valuable thing on the field. Now that now the defenders have overtaken you, but now you have got this space this side. Hmm. Okay, so now now the disc is a bit more towards the sideline, right? And you don't want to you don't want to hang out with the disc on the sideline. So there's nothing 
pretty developing there. So yeah, immediately look back. This is exactly where the defense wants you. Yeah, they want to trap you on that sideline. Yeah, that's a possibility. Yep, there you go. Nice throw. Oh, and I love that. Nice quick run into the middle. Brilliant. Just taking the taking the immediate open pass. Now it should just be quick pass, quick pass, quick pass. Oh, just execution error. Yeah. Yeah, should have dumped early to get avoid, to get trapped to avoid getting trapped on the sideline. Yeah, I, um, it wasn't you know it was only like a second or so, um, but as soon as you realise there's no continuation, just get it off the line. Um, a really a really nice thing to do is, is you know I mean I'm I'm when I play I'm very very active kind of player, um, and instead of just kind of throwing the disc away from the sideline, you know I would I'd look to throw it here. But then I would then attack this space here, okay. So I'm looking. I'm looking to get the quick return back in here, okay. Um, that works. That works the other way as well. So when I when when one makes this pass here, yeah. As soon as you've made that pass, then think about going in and attacking this space in here okay um, at the very least it's going to drag a few defenders over um, this player can come across for the easy for the easy pass okay Yeah, it's a shame because you know you had had good options there. Now it could help more going back. Yeah, potentially. Um, okay, let's have a look now. So that was. Uh, okay, so now I think we're on to the next game. Is that right? So the highlight here is poor space and timing and catching error. We could have used a quick dump to mark us at 16 seconds for a swing. All right, so we're against a black team now, and oh, can I show again the first cut? Um, the first cut in in the zone point. Is that? Uh, like that, this one, this cut here. After the turnover, after the turnover. Okay, there's the turn. Oh yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, that's the that's the hips thing you're talking about. So at this point, when he's when he's changing, then yeah, you want to turn to your right. Um, yeah, rather than rather than side stepping left. Like as soon as as soon as you realise, okay, he's he's changing plan. He's going to do something else. Then you got to turn and face face him. Be like, right, what is he doing? Where's he going? Um, as soon as you turn your back, he knows that he can just take one step and throw you one way, and then get free the other way. Yeah. So if you if you had turned and were facing him at this point, then you know you would have you would have been able to stay stay closer to him. <laughs> Got burned. Yeah. Yeah. I call it um. Like hips marking, you can you can just you can watch the hips of the opponent and just see where their hips are facing, and point your hips at there. So, if they're traveling fast, then you aim like really in far in front of their hips. If they're just stood still or just moving slowly, then you aim just a little bit in front of their hips. But try and triangulate between your hips and their hips. 
Okay, so it was a very good cut. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so this is spacing and timing. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, I I tend to this doesn't look like vertical stack offense, basically. Um But I tend to advise people not to surround the disc. So if the disc is here that everybody's this side. Um obviously in vertical stack you normally have a dump. <clears throat> but the problems are defenders like this can then you know get in the way and stop stop any kind of option over this side now and this defender is kind of making this a bit of an awkward throw and then at this point I'd also suggest not going down this narrow channel here um, there's not really much space there and there's no urgency to move there so you can just hang out in this space and, and wait wait for the uh, necessity um, yeah, so looking downfield, this defender knows you're looking downfield, so they, he makes the throw a bit harder. And then it's a, it's a tricky catch because it's a low throw and the defender's coming right in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I, I wouldn't, the, it's not very disciplined in terms of, of stack play, if it is stack. Um, but I think when you have players spread out, you need to you need to kind of look at the players near you and, and the ones that are in space and try and get the disc to them, try and get the disc moving rather than kind of catch and look downfield and wait for the cut. So there's a catch, there's a fake downfield, still looking downfield, you know, could could easily lay the disc off. Another so another another thing, when you when you look at this pass, it might not it might not make seem that exciting. But if you then think you can pass it and then get the disc back, then suddenly the two of you can be passing to each other going down this channel. Okay. Once once your whole team starts moving the disc quickly, then you're more encouraged to move the disc quickly because you know you can get it back quickly as well. He then needs to move upfield faster. Um, which one's Kiva? I'm not sure. Number nine, this one. Is that Kiva? Hmm, potentially, I don't know, like, there's no dump at the moment, so if this throw doesn't go, then actually Kiva maybe should be over here. Um, we're slow to move back. We are slow to move back the stack as the disc moves forward. Yeah, yeah, so the, so the, everyone's, everyone's very keen to cut. And there's no real stack positioning. I mean, kind of setting the front of the stack here. Um, but yeah, it's awkward. Like one of the reasons it's awkward is just because we have these defenders here. You know, if this was, if this was just a backhand out through this channel, then it potentially would be easier. Um, this this deep cut looks very familiar, and it's it's one that the defender doesn't need to respect that much because it's a very tricky throw. Also, the defender can can hang out towards the middle of the field a little bit more and and in the end that's what you have to do you have to come back towards the middle of the field where the defender is that contributes to the turnover okay uh what are the other notes on this point okay it says you could have used a quick dump and then a swing yeah yeah the disc the disc generally can move faster here Yeah, okay. I think we looked at that point long enough. Um, going deep is one of the ways we have to move back and provide an option at the same time. Would it be ideal to get a dump and swing? Um, I like the disc moving. I like the disc moving quickly. I think, you know, if this guy's free here, passing the disc, and then you move down the line, and if you're not free, then pass the disc back around here. 
and then one of these guys will be free over this way. Take take what they give you is very good advice. So the defender's giving you that. So take take that throw, I'd say. At that point. Yeah, he wants what he's clapping. <laughs> yeah, he can't believe he hasn't been throwing it. <laughs> but I think it is good. I mean, some players would argue you don't want the disc on the sideline like that. You know, you're not gaining yards. Uh, I prefer the style where the disc moves a lot quicker. Um, but obviously, you know, it's, it's up to... It's up to the um, your coach what style you play, um, and you know what style just kind of suits you as players, really. Uh, again, like after that fake, you know, when you when you stood like this, when you're that close to the sideline and you stand like that, then you what you can see on the field. That's not right. Hang on. What you can see on the field is a bit wider than that. So you can see like this, okay, um, which isn't a huge amount of the field, and it's quite a lot of the sideline, which isn't particularly useful information. Um, so what I would suggest when you have the disc here is actually to face infield, okay, so turn this way, right, and then you can see like this, okay, and once you face infield, then you get to throw these options here, okay? Um, or you see the options, so you're able to you're able to throw them. Um, yeah, and then once once the disc moves over to this side, then all of the defenders, there's three of them here, they have to go all the way across. You know, we've actually got a numbers advantage if the play is on the other side. So I think a, I think a dump and swing would be good, Marcus. Okay, next point. Um, <laughs> yeah, take what they give you is a, is a very, very smart way of playing. Um, okay, on defense, they score up line from trap. Another example of why never turning giving you back to the person you're covering, always turn inside. Okay, what's going on here? forward a oh, nice bid nice bid in the end but yeah this it's that moment like all he's trying to all he's trying to get you to do is to accelerate away from the front corner and when you take that step you're a bit flat footed and he's in you know legs bent he's ready to accelerate and you can see that that step is just a fake and he does it when he's with his body low to the ground it's a jab um and this this defense uh you're kind of you kind of stop that move and then you change direction you, you tighten up a bit you don't really need to be that tight at that point you like it's better to kind of check what's going on with the disc where the throat is yeah and when that jab step happens then yeah, you've got to get your body low. You've got to bend your legs, and you've got to be, just be ready to 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 see what he's going to do after that jab step. Because you know, sure his body's moving that way, but that it doesn't look like he's actually going to run that way right from this point here. You know, that's not where his arms would be. Um, I mean, it, it's easy to say these things when you can see it frame by frame, right? Um, but you can see you, you turn your you turn your back, so that's that's the kind of rule of thumb always have your hips facing their hips okay and at this point it's really hard to fake with the hips that's why so at this point it's stepped over there but his hips are facing this way okay if his hips are facing that way then yeah you can commit his hips are facing this way so then when your hips then face that way and his hip, hips are facing this way that's when you beat now you almost get a good d at the end yeah that's a good bit it's a good bit it's very close Yeah, exactly. It's another blind turn on the defender. Okay. Uh... Right, next point. Poor timing. This is a... This is in the notes. Valerio sent me. Poor timing and a lot of overlapping. Too many, too many standing 
then cut straight to one side without v-cuts and good angles uh, for example Kiva at 15 seconds could have played a give and go with Jason who needs to be more quick and intentional about getting in the 45 degree dump position okay so oh wait okay this the turnover already happened so general timing and spacing things um, Okay, no, no fakes on your cuts, and the give go could be quicker and more intentional. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's some downtime there. Just those few seconds can be costly. Um, you want to you want to keep the disc moving. I like the inward pivot. You know, I like that because you can see you're you're able to see the whole field like this. Um, it's just nobody's moving. <laughs> um, this is the move that I don't like as well. Forty-six here. I I call this narrow channel. Okay. Um, between the disc and the sideline. Okay. Avoid avoid the narrow channel. All right. That's that should be completely free for uh for people to get the disc um from at the end of their cuts rather than dragging your defender through it it causes causes problems and it, and it clogs up clogs up the space okay so i like this it's pointing all right um so that's probably what the delay is about or it's probably related to the delay um something technique wise something quite technical after you make this fake on the sidearm okay fakes should always be believable and realistic okay you're faking to a real cutter who's making the space smaller. That's the thing we talked about earlier. Um, so that's a good fake, right? Because the defender has to respect it. Now, personally, I would I wouldn't step over and commit this step to the backhand. I would I would just kind of look to that to look, look in field and just be ready to maybe even throw without pivoting or, or to pivot if I need to. Once you've pivoted, yeah, and then he asks for the hug. The play, the position that you're in there, it's very difficult to hug once you've already pivoted to then like, all right, I'll step. Now I'll wind up my body and throw. Um, it's just hard mechanically. So after that, after the, uh, oops, after the side on fake, I would just kind of stand and be ready to throw a backhand. And then potentially the force wouldn't come over. You'd see him free deep and you'd be able to step and throw. Um, but yeah, he's, he's not on, so he comes back. But the defender, so if you had faked as well, so even if you got the mechanics a bit out of sync, he puts the hand up. You have to validate that. You have to respect that. Um, and you have to work together. So if he puts the hand up. You should fake to communicate to him. You don't want that. The defender doesn't know that. The defender will will have to bite. Okay. If the, if the fake happened there, this defender would be sprinting towards the end zone, and then he would be free when he came under. Okay, and that's. These are the small things that, that take the seconds away from the still count. And then it's a good, it's a good fake. Um, and the dump goes. So Yeah, the dump could have been there earlier, but the, dump, the dump's got separation. So I'd say there's no urgency to get, to get that dump into, in, into position. Especially when the disc is near the sideline. Like you don't want to be 45 degrees back on the open side here. Um, this is fine. It's good to get that angle. Now it opens up the break side. Again, you've got to respect that. You've got to, you've got to, um, well, thanks for subscribing, Sandon. You have to um, respect the, uh, the break side cut. You have to um, validate it. So that should be immediately either faking that, we got a subscribing subscriber animation plan. Excellent. Thank you, Sandon, for subscribing. <laughs> that was the um one of the first ever um adverts for a frisbee back in, in the seventies. I thought it'd be nice to put it on <laughs> put it on as the subscriber um meme. Okay, so yeah, as soon as this disc goes here, then yeah, like fake or throw, you know, just throw a big around. Nice, another subscriber. Thank you, Alanya. 
So yeah, that 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 can go break side. All right now, now it's stopped again. <laughs> We're getting all the subscribers. Yeah, get it in now, guys. Thank you, Dylan, for the subscribe. Okay, cool. So look, we look break side now. Thank you, Miles. Subscribing. The handler could have put it out of space. Yeah, exactly. If if the handler just pops it out, like it doesn't have to be super accurate. It just has to be to all this space over here. Uh, can I rewind that once more? <laughs> have I been doing it a lot? Uh, <laughs> the only reason I'm doing it is for the subs. <laughs> um, okay, so, well, yeah, I'm doing it for the subs. Mm. Doing it partially because I enjoy it. I'm not being paid, so I'm not doing it for the money. Unless I'm doing it for the long-term money. I'm doing it for the smart money. <laughs> I think you're only subscribing because you like watching that advert. <laughs> um, okay, so break side. Yeah, this goes in the end. Let's see what the notes are on this. Oh, okay, could have could have played a give go with Jason. That's the uh, that's the note. So where's the option for the give go here? Is it oh, is it that cut there? Yeah, could have potentially, but it's tricky because this player's hung out for a little bit and, and kind of kept the defender in there. So I think if he clears out a bit harder, then it will be clearer that this cut is free. But as it is, he doesn't commit to the cut fully because he can see the defender nearby. And then this is this is good timing because he sees that another option hasn't materialized. Yeah, well that's not on. So then he, he times his cut, and then that's a good you know a good choice to to throw. It's just um, the defender's on it. Oh, the, the, this is the angle as well. So someone said earlier, should I should I cut wider? This is quite a wide, deep cut, and you see it opens up this window here. For the defender, if the disc is, is is if the disc just isn't perfect, then the defender can get in there, you know, as he does. Um, so when making that move from the back, just take a bit of a sharper line. Yeah, take a bit of a sharp line so the defender doesn't have a bigger window intercept. <laughs> You're welcome, Valerio. Um, Jason is left side. I give goes. I give go to the first cutter. Oh, you mean the dump that's poached? Oh, you mean you mean ah oh, this one? Yep, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, and that this is another thing about about just moving the disc and getting it out there. Like, if you see this situation, I mean, you might see someone free. You might see separation. I see space. Okay, and I don't know if you guys are fans of football, but some top football players like Messi was it? He said he spent his entire time looking for space. Like he spent all of his career looking for space. Once this player has got the disc. Okay, then all of the rest around him is space. Okay, so you can throw that pass, all right, and and then you can just attack that space. And that space is yours. Okay, you can you can do a lot once you've passed the disc. People people get a bit too attached to holding the disc, you know, thinking right, okay, I'm involved in the game, I'm holding the disc, I'm looking for a throw. You want the disc to be in someone else's hands and the space to be right in front of them you know if you're able to pass and then immediately run you're very likely to get the disc back uh if you make a good move um and oh football is american football yeah sorry soccer if you know if you know soccer they always they spend their whole careers looking for space basically um but yeah if you can if you can pass and then run then um you can you can beat your defender quite easily you know they're not set up to mark you running they're set up to mark you for throwing so you pass and run, um, and then if your team are used to taking those quick passes, then <laughs> then um, you're able to get the disc moving nice and quick. Okay, on to the next. 
Um, yeah. Oh, so hang on. This is a turnover. <laughs> Look at that fake. Oop. <laughs> Everyone to that side, yeah. It's tricky this face marking here. Quite easily, quite easy to be punished. You know, if the disc could go anywhere in this entire half of the end zone right now, it's good to keep half an eye on the disc, half an eye on the thrower, half an eye on the um, receiver. <laughs> okay, um, this one just quickly. I'll just I won't analyze this one. The notes say Noah should be back. His moan is poaching. After receiving from Michael, Walker should pivot for the breakside continuation pass to Andrew instead of using the inside out. After the turn, Noah doesn't have a dump and everyone is slow to positioning. Stretch deep and V cuts. Mm -hmm. oh, their, their offense is quite static, isn't it? Oof. Okay, that's a turn. Yeah, no dump. And everyone kind of ran into the stack rather than... You can just cut immediately when there's a turnover. Your defender's probably out of position, so you can just immediately do a cut. Uh, a bit of an execution error thrown behind the catcher there. Um, yeah, definitely a deep cut. You definitely want a, a nice, quick, early deep cut happening when there's a turnover. A quick transition is important. Okay, what's the next point? Uh, right, more efficiency after the pull. Instead of Kiva to Noah, Noah to Kiva, Kiva to Noah again, with just a few yards gained, better if one of the two look upfield and cutters start to flow on the sideline. <laughs> hmm. Um. Definitely at that point. So at this point here, there should be a cut happening here, and it's just a bit disinterested, you know. Like just because, just because, um. The vertical stack is kind of the inactive space. Doesn't mean that you you can you know it's it's good to be just heads down, kind of being in the stack. You know, at this point, there's a huge opportunity to to use this space. So yeah, it did get a little bit stifled at the start there. Um, the only sharp cut is done by Elijah. After good D, 40 seconds, Mark should pass to Noah. Noah to Jackson. Undercut since his man was deep. <laughs> yeah, so we're kind of cutting each other up as well. Yeah, so this, this cut here isn't, isn't a particularly good one because um, you're just running in a straight line and you don't shake the defender off. You know, you've got you've got a yard separation, and you should know that you've only got a yard separation, and so then that that's never that's never going to be a, a really good option. And then when he pivots out and goes to throw, then you peel away. So if he had released that, then the defender would definitely have got a D. So it's best not to don't run through those cuts. You know, like shake shake your shake your man off before you make before you commit to a cut. Make those V cuts, make the shop. Yeah, that's why we do the faking and the cutting to, to shake your person off before you actually accelerate. Whereas it is, you bring the defender with you, it distracts the thrower, almost teases the thrower into throwing a turnover, and then we have a sharp cut here. Okay, going open side. Okay, defender's committed. I'll plant my foot and go break side, but you can't follow through with it because this cut's happening. Okay, so that's how we've kind of cut each other up there. And then kind of clogging on the open side. I think at this late in the stall, you should probably take that option and, and try and attack that upline space yourself. Um, 
You don't need to set the stack. Yeah, yeah, you can, when this point begins, you can you can just be moving the discs between each other as like as far as you can. Keep those passes going. Um Yeah, don't get don't get sucked into the mentality of just holding the disc and looking downfield waiting waiting for a pass. It's very kind of American football esque, but it's not the same rules. <laughs> You know, we can we can move the disc quicker and and like like in soccer, you know, kind of pass and run, pass and run. Uh that's good D. Yeah, the throw maybe should just be out to the space, so as soon as you see the sorry to rewind this again and again. As soon as you see that acceleration, at that point when you've got the shoulder in front, then just maybe throw it all the way over here. Yeah. Yeah, it could be more out of space. This is Oregon apparently. Why is Kiva behind the handler? Uh too many cuts. <clears throat> I'm just going through. We don't need to set the stack if we're moving the disc and no mark on, correct? Um once again too many cuts. Uh let's have a quick look. Yes, it is too many cuts, yeah. I saw that earlier because people were cutting each other up. Like we got some reactionary cutters, so some people see this fake and then they react. Pivot comes over and they react, but we've got two people reacting. He pulls out of the cut, that's good awareness. Um so we've got some reactionary cutters and then we've got some people that are kind of cutting because they I don't know, feel like they should or something. Like the the one that came from the the one that came from the back early on. Um that you know, this cut should never have happened, really. Um if you see the space, then you know allow your teammates to use it. Definitely don't drag your defender in there. Um, not enough separation between the cutter and defender. Yeah, that's a, that's a contributing factor, but the throw could have been further out. Um, the dump's moving before eye contact. Yeah, I, I would be happy just hanging out here. Like, I don't particularly want the disc over on towards the sideline so yeah you don't need to move that early <laughs> uh, I think this team is Oregon yeah it is okay what was the I'm not clearing fast enough uh, after a good D at 40 seconds Marcus should pass to Noah okay so that's RD so let's just watch Good awareness, yeah. Where does he even come from? All the way over there. Yeah, so if he if he was face marking, then this wouldn't be an option. See as the disc goes up, gets in there quickly. And jumps early, I like that. Jumps nice and early to kind of establish that that's his space. <laughs> oh my. It happens to all of us. The uh the execution error that just makes it look like a wild, wild huck. Um, what I would do is just throw the short pass here, just just throw to this guy and, and run after him. And if you're not happy with that, then throw to this guy and then you run into the space. Yeah, there's you can easily make up 40, 50 yards. Well, you can easily make up 20, 30 yards and you can likely make up for, make 40, 50 yards just by taking these open passes. But even even if this throw is executed perfectly, then that player isn't actually deep of the last defender. Yeah, there's a defender there that's in the middle of the field ready for any big throw. <laughs> I just like I like the sequence. A nice D and then whoosh. <laughs> Head and hands. Yeah. Happens, happens to all of us. Um Yeah, be more happy just to take the open passes. Take what they give you. Just the short ones, and then this guy's free here as well on the open side as well. Um, and yeah, so is this Jackson? Um, notice this is man's deep comes under. Could potentially communicate more as well. Like 
I don't know if Jackson knew that his mic goes deep, but if he shouts poach and puts his arms up, and if the people near the disc are calling for it, you know, that gives a thrower more confidence in those throws. If you if you know your receiver is expecting and wanting that that pass, then uh, yeah, it's much much easier to to just put it in their hands. All right, next, <laughs> yeah, keep keep a. Uh, do do keep that up. I do have a tendency to to get right into the into the fine details of things. Uh, it could have broken the mark and sent to the break side. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's there's probably options there as well. Hmm. There's no mark. Um, okay, on to the next clip. Okay, after Marcus gets the disc. And did we watch the? Let's just watch the score. Is that where it went out the sideline? Okay, it went out here. Up the line. Yeah, just getting beaten up the line. So you've got to sort that that positioning out. Yeah, this is this is bad positioning because yeah, in between the thrower and the defender, so you, the, the cutter, so you can't. You're not in a position to see both of them. You're in a position yourself, so you've got the cutter here and the and the thrower here. And you kind of look in between them, so you can see the cutter and you can see the thrower. And then whoever's moving, you can like turn to them a bit more to get a bit more information. Whereas if you're in between, you can see them but not the disc, or you can see them and not the the cutter. And that's what happens here. He's caught in between. So when you look at the disc, then that's when the cutter then moves. Yeah, you want to you want to triangulate so you can see see both things, both the thrower and the cutter. All right, um, scuba. Okay, notice after Marcus gets to this, there are four players going deep but zero undercuts. Speaking of angles of attack, Noah is open deep, but is cutting from the same section of the field with the thrower. Ah, chocolate to chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, it's let's have a look then. Nice catch under pressure. But, um, yeah, that that angle. See that angle, and yeah, and then he looks over the left shoulder. So reducing the space, he can hit down to this basically without him having to bend back around. So those those deep cuts should go completely straight, you know, or even even away. So at this point here, when I realise he's going to catch it, actually, if I were in that position, I would likely cut this way and then look over that shoulder, right? Just to just to open up this huge space here. It's, de it's definitely a good time to provide the deep option. Um, could anyone have come under? Well, really, I mean, you, you can wait until the this this is either thrown or faked, and then the time it would be to come under. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going from the same section to the same section. That's why I would move away and turn over so that actually you can throw to like half of the end zone, it doesn't have to be straight down the middle. Oh, it came from the Neapolitan ice cream, I see. Well, you've got strawberry, vanilla and chocolate. Oh, what, how's that, how's that not a D? Oh no. <laughs> we could try to clap catch it and it went through through his hands. It's good to it's good to always try and catch your D's. Oh ooh <laughs> exciting stuff. Who's up? No 
<laughs> no. <laughs> oh, he's just tickling underneath it. Has, isn't able to get a grip around it. Wow, exciting stuff. Yeah, Neapolitan. Uh, okay, and then we're on offense again. Okay, let's have a look at the stack over here. MP3, there's a disc, catch. Mm. So in that <laughs> in that position here, you really want to be just taking a short throw and running with the disc. Yeah, like or running or running after the disc. The defender's behind you. You're free deep. Look at it that way. You're free deep. You just have to get the disc out of your hand so you can run. So you should be looking for very quick, very quick passes. That's a good safe catch. I like that. And this is chocolate to chocolate again. Um, there's a couple of things going on here. So that angle should be going straight or even slightly further away from the line. Um, and then the technique on the throw, it doesn't need to be high release so. here. Yeah, oh, does it though? <laughs> but that, yeah, that technique's tricky to get a um, tricky to get a, a, a long throw off with that technique. Um, yeah, and it's very much you're you're snapping. You're using just wrist on that. If you if you drop your shoulder, yeah. If you drop your shoulder down a bit more, then you're able to rotate with your core and come through with the throw, um, rather than getting it up over the top and then snapping the wrist to get the, the distance on it. Um, yeah. If you think the force might be a trouble, that might be a problem. Then just a little shoulder fake to to the sidearm side gives you an extra foot or two that then you're able to step over and release the back end. <clears throat> wow, look at that view. You're lucky to be playing there. And this is cool. Is that the end of that? I think that's the end of that footage. Execution error deep. Notice how Kiva, after receiving the around from Elijah, trapped, could pass with a quick backhand to Josiah, who could give the disc back to Noah in a better position to throw the bomb. Well, that's cool. We get to see it land. <laughs> um, so. Was that after receiving the around, then could pass quick backhand? Is that the around, or is the around a bit earlier? This is the around. Oh yeah, no, I did say that. Yeah, the quick backhand here. Yeah, that that that's that's the throw to make, for sure. Okay, and that's what you should be looking and trying to do. You know, if you can't do it immediately, then look to do it. You fake it. Something else opens up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very nice setting. Good landing. Um, okay. Right, now we have the game against Combo. Oh, and we've got sound for this one. Uh, you want sound for this one? Should I turn the sound off? Let me know. Let me know if you if you prefer sound off. Um, what are the notes for this? Jason to David, David to Jason. In this case, da Jason should have passed back to David. He's open for a couple of seconds to move the disc to the break side. Let's just go through this while I talk about it. He's open for a couple of seconds to move the disc to the break side. Josiah is coming with separation from his man. Andrew should go deep or move to the break side since his man is poaching in the open side. Yeah, just pass it back. Yeah, okay, cool. Good believable fake. Yeah, you can immediately, after that fake, keep the keep the rhythm. Yeah, so there's a fake. Yeah, and then and then look to pass here. Yeah, try and pump that fake as well. So the defender is watching you, and if you 
if you actually follow through with your arm, that gets him committing a little bit more. Yeah, um, and that will help your, your teammates get free. And then execution error, there's also a bit of a poaching defender here. Yeah, you want to lead that out to the space with a bit of outside in. <laughs> yeah, throw into the ground. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I've thrown into the ground more times than you. <laughs> Probably thrown into the ground more times than you've thrown. Complete pass. So. <laughs> uh, right. Another situation where the handlers are moving the disc, but the cutters. Another situation where the handlers are moving the disc, but the cutters are forming the stack instead of providing early cuts. The way we give to the defense the advantage to set. No, that way we give the defense the advantage they can set. The error is a mix of execution and angle of cut without the V change in direction. Great effort from Miles, who doesn't get intimidated by the size intimidated by the size of the receiver, stays close to him with good positioning. Okay. And there's moving the disc. So this is another this is another cut which is too closely covered to be following through. If you follow through with a covered cut in vertical stack, you take the space away from your teammates. It's not true in hex offense that I uh, champion, but in vertical stack it is true. If you move, you're taking space away from your teammates. Uh, if you're covered, so, and then there's a bit of delay before then the next cuts. Yeah, yeah, he accelerates, and this is probably this is probably an angle. So you're slowing up here as well. Your cut should get faster and faster. So you, you start off fast, which is good. This is good acceleration here, and then as soon as it little, looks like he's going to throw, you're slowing up. Okay, I don't know whether maybe slowing up because it's going to make the catch easier. But really, you want to be speeding up um, and getting it out of the air as quickly as possible. Because otherwise the defender will do exactly that. Yeah, run through the disc. That's a, that's a, that's a simple way of putting it. Run through the disc. And Miles has the disc for many seconds without there being any cuts. I mean, apart from the covered one here. One, two, three. Yeah, pretty much four seconds. Um, but you know, it could be because people are watching, see what's developing over here. Yeah, because the, the cut comes free on that side as well. So probably we're waiting for the that player to get to clear out. Um, let's go back to the notes. Uh, Effort from Miles, it doesn't get intimidated by the size of the receiver. It stay, oh, stays close to him. A bit of a video delay there. Yeah, Miles puts in the best bit he can there, really. Yeah, he does. He does get good positioning, and this is the break side, right? So, like I said before, you know, if 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 the disc goes out nicely to the break side corner, then really the other team should be scoring. But this is great. Leg spent, approaching with um, approaching the disc with a few steps. Yeah, and actually, that's so close. You know, you're what like four inches below his hand there, maybe. Um. And he's significantly taller. So you've actually, you've actually, you kind of out jumped him in that you've jumped higher than he's jumped. But he had a head start. <laughs> you can look at it that way. Um, but yeah, that's a good bit, Miles. Quick look for the comments. Less than that. Yeah, well, yeah. Less than four inches from the disc. Okay, good flow with a deep cut. Good communication to keep only one dump. Good movement of David, who after cutting on the open side without receiving the disc, changes direction to clear the space for Noah's huck. 
notice how we could have ended with the disc in the same position if at the beginning Noah, without a mark, hits Elijah with a backhand instead of using the IO a few seconds later. So let's have a look at all this good movement to start with. Okay, boom, 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 move, move, move. We've got the disc over to the break side, which is where you want it at the beginning. And then up the line, it's good. Communication to get one dump out of there. Something to consider as well. I mean, this is maybe something just for Valerio to think about, but when you have the disc here on the break side, uh, towards the sideline, um, you very rarely need the dump. There's a lot of space for, the, for this player to throw to. So usually, players can, will just be free if they just run through into this space. And if they're not, then they're, then they're free going back into this space here. So sometimes, yeah, you don't need, sometimes you don't need the dump if you're on that break side sideline. Um, but that depends on your system that you're running. That's nice. That was good rhythm there. So he, he, he looked downfield, he did a realistic fake, like, you know, to a realistic option. Um, and then he immediately looks and just keeps the flow going with that. And that's really nice, really nice dump movement as well. You see he's marked and he follows the disc as soon as it's thrown, communicates, gets the disc back, puts it up nicely. And then a really good read for the safe clap catch. Excellent play. We could have ended with the disc in the same position if at the beginning no, without a mark, hits Elijah with a backhand instead of using the IO a few seconds later. Let's rewind. Yeah, okay. What, are we talking about this throw here? It looks like a backhand over the shoulder. Could be complete there. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I think. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a really nice position. You can just you can pop a disc over onto the break side. Take those throws as soon as you can. And even if even if the force stops it, they'll step over, stop the backhand, then you can throw the inside. Uh, okay. Let's go on to the next point, shall we? Uh, let's actually skip. Oh, okay. We score this next one, so I just watch it through. Um, good flow on the open side. Comments. Where's the disc? I've lost it. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's being bricked. Okay, turn over, nice quick transition. Brilliant, taking the open pass. Straight down the sideline, passing it back, and again, excellent. This, this is what I was talking about earlier. Taking those open passes, eating up the yards, and then and then straight into the corner for the score. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> this point they score. At the beginning of the play, we have two opportunities to make a block if we anticipate, dictate our person-to-person -person defense. So, there's a disc over here. So it does look like uh, this defender here can be more dictating. Um, looks like they're kind of reacting uh, to what the offense is doing rather than dictating what they can do. And where is the, there was another bid opportunity here. Yeah, try and catch it. Try and catch the disc uh, when you're on defense <clears throat> because going for the swipe it's more likely to to actually miss it. I've seen so many like using using this kind of frame by frame, you would not believe how many would be D's I've seen not be D's because the person's been there and they brought their arm back to hit it. <laughs> Whereas the person just goes straight to it for the catch. 
is the one that gets it first. So catch your D's. Always try and catch your D's. Helps with the transition as well. Should have laid out, yeah. Could have done that too. <laughs> yes, Daniel. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I guess you spotted that as well. Nice work. Oh, you're bad, huh? I mean, we're all, we, we've all got things to learn. So it's not we're not we're not doing this so we can find who to blame. We're doing this to uh, so that you guys can improve, right? For uh, the championships that are coming up and beyond. I'm I'm always learning whenever I play. There's, there is a lot to learn. That's nice. Nice inside. Ooh, and then the turnover. This is universe point. <laughs> they look tired. <laughs> um, so yeah, we played well, including finally attacking the break side, turning an execution error. The angle timing and determination of the cut could be more efficient. We uh, we don't have a huge amount of time, so let's just watch this through, and then we can move on to the next next game and analyze, do some analysis on that. Yeah, universe point. Want to travel? <laughs> Someone just screams in the background. Let's just quickly see if there's the travel. Ah, uh, no. Just weird technique. <laughs> you jumped so late after catching it. Right? I mean, I might see that I was wrong again. Yeah, no, he's it's just going down there as he catches it. And then, huh? <laughs> Yeah, good. Good resolving it quickly. Wearing sunglasses, so I'd never wear sunglasses when I play because then my teammates don't know what I'm looking. You know, it's hard to know what he's thinking. He's just kind of looking around. Ah, and then he's unmarked in the end. I guess he's there's been a lot of ground to cover. Everyone's sprinting down. Yeah, got to dictate more on that defense. Okay. After the pool, wait, let's have a look if there's any comments. Ah, uh, when your markers are trying to switch. Yeah, switching, you need to, well, I could talk for hours about switching. Um, <clears throat> communication's the key. Uh, and preempting it as well, communicating before you need to switch. So being ready to switch before the offense move, because you have that communication channel open, then it's much easier to communicate. Um, after the fall, Noah to Marcus. Marcus could turn and give the backhand to Elijah instead of throwing a flick back to Noah. Noah at this point. Okay, so after Noah to Marcus. Marcus could turn and give the backhand to Elijah. Uh, I don't have roster numbers and I haven't remembered people's names. So. I guess this is where you could throw the backhand. Is that right? Oh, no, 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 it was earlier. It was earlier. It just says flick, so I got a bit confused. Um, no, at this point, seeing the cup coming, should pivot backwards to give an immediate dump to Marcus. He needs to react, go back to get an easy dump, and swing to the opposite side. No, it could still pass to Ben. He just has to look away in the other side instead of doing what the cup wants, force a pass. Yeah, so as soon as as soon as you recognise that there's this cup around you, then get that disc moving again. Okay, don't don't let the cup set because they're trying to figure out where their positioning is. As soon as they have this, then they're all able to look around, and now they're all comfortable. Okay. So you want the disc out of your hands. 
So yeah, should should throw this dump around here. Uh, let's have a look at the option you're looking at there. Yeah, so you're trying to throw through the guy. And I think if if you saw this, if you fate if you fate to that, or if you tried to throw to that, you'd bring the defender out, and then this would be an option. But there's no there's no realistic believable fakes. Whenever whenever someone makes a move, you need to validate it by trying to throw to it. Yeah, which can result in a fake, and then it opens up the other options on the field. Would a hammer to the break side be a good idea? Let's have a look. Yes, if you have that distance, then a hammer over here would be good. But it would have to be, you know, this guy sprinting that way would, would have to not be able to get it, so it'd have to be quite a big hammer. Unless you fake him out. Needs an earlier dump in place. Yeah, it needs to initiate the dump by turning, turning, turning to him. Or hammer over the cup, indeed. There's a B. Okay, time out called on the end in line. Cross it across. Giant B, yeah. Big bug approaching the camera. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, okay, yeah. They, they score in the unfocused focus footage. Oh, there's the beat. The B's back. There he goes. That's what they. That's what the actual camera's focusing on. <laughs> yeah, so you see how many fakes he's doing, it keeps the defenders very busy. Yeah, you have to prioritize the open side. That step towards the break side is, is, is going to set you up for disaster. As soon as your player gets free towards the open side cone, then that's another time when they should be scoring. So yeah, deny that. Deny that and dictate them. Dictate, sorry, it's a bit bright. Dictate that they have to go break side. If you can. Uh, any more comments on that? Okay, no, just about the B. That's cool. Uh, this kill on the dump. On the end zone, they overthrow, but our reaction on the rebound is slow and they score. Yeah, so it looks like just a miscommunication, so there's probably not much to say about it. Yeah, and just it's kind of execution, kind of miscommunication. I think one player wants to get it in the narrow channel. It's okay to be in the narrow channel if you get the disc, but running through the narrow channel is bad. This is um against the rules. You're not allowed to stand over the disc. So when there's a turnover, you have to walk to the discs. You have to move to the disc at walking pace or faster. And then when you arrive at the disc, you must bring it into play. And that is my understanding of Woofdorf rules. So I don't play USAU rules. Maybe it's a bit different, but I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. Maybe there was a stoppage for something else. Oh, yeah. It's kind of it's awareness here. One like dictate. So this this face marking is giving too much power to the opposition. And being this close means that they just need to get one step around you, and then that's it. You know, now now you're chasing them, and you, you know you didn't want to initiate the contact there, so you slowed up a little bit so you didn't trip them up, which is the right thing to do. But you shouldn't be in that situation in the first place. Like, what's what's the what's the risk of him actually getting the disc over in this corner? Uh, if if it comes, then you're gonna have enough time to react. You're gonna be able to get a build on it. So you give a bit more separation. Just protect that open side cone. 
It's a very fast cut. Um, and then this disc goes up. More face marking here. Yeah, back to the disc. Can't see it. And the player just runs past and gets it. Position yourselves so you can see the person you're marking and the disc at the same time. Okay, and it, you'll just be seeing them out of the corners of your eyes. So you'll just be looking at grass in between them and then turning a little bit this way if they're doing something, a little bit to the throw if they're doing something. But don't have your back to the disc, don't have your back to your defender, uh, sorry, your, your mark, the cutter. Alright, back to the line and the camera changes. Let's just see the comments. Good point. So here, here's up to the defense to call the delay. Yeah. Yeah, I, the offense shouldn't shouldn't delay. Defense say delay of game, I think. You whiffed up anyway. You got three seconds to start once you're standing over the disc. Is that after they've called delay? It's worth looking up and and Whoever looks it up, just you know, tell the rest of the team what you found in the rule. The, the rule book is public. It's not like a lot of sports. It's not easy to actually find the rule book and look through it. In Ultimate Frisbee, you can just find the rule book and look through it. Don't don't just trust what other people say the rules are. You know, I've heard I've heard so many people say rules are rules when when they're just they've heard someone else say it and they've heard someone else say it. Just look at the rules yourselves so that you know. Um, okay, so you, you can call delay three, two, one. Uh, if you do check the rules, then yeah, just um, quote them to your uh, group chat. Okay, what happens in this point? Okay, against the zone, while moving the disc mostly on the open side, and when we decide to attack the break, we do with a very risky flick across the whole field. Yeah, so we've got a lot of players over on the open side. Chooses not to throw to the sideline. Working it on the open side, as said. Risky flick across. Yeah, could have, could have been through the dump. Yeah. Just keep the passes nice and short and simple. Um. Yeah, dump and swing. Um. We forced the first one when trapped in the sideline, and then a second one that ended right in the hands of their deep deep. Let's have a look here, hang on. Just... So is this is this Noah? Gradually getting to know know the names. As soon as that disc is passed, then you want to plant your foot and get moving over to the other side of the field. Yeah, gotta be quicker. I know it's a you know long day. Looks looks like it's pretty hot weather as well. But uh so this second the second pass here is actually very risky. Like far riskier than it needs to be, this one. So I know what's happening on these passes. Um if he gets it in his hands here, then he's got the option here. You can just get the disc moving. It's not about the distance that the disc covers. You've also got to have the, the people with it so you can then build on that distance. String the passes together. Um First one, okay, the first, we force the first throw when trapped against the sideline. And the second one goes to the deep, deep. Yeah, I mean, that's, this is pretty close here. And you're kind of thrown to the, it's weird, you're kind of thrown to the back of the receiver, unless you're thrown to this one. Yeah, maybe you are. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's an indication of general kind of like space. Like the spatial awareness needs to be worked on and communication and, and stuff. For two people to be in the same place like that. But you make the catch, which is good. And then this is the right option to throw to, I think. Mm, not much going on. So get it moving. Oh, I could have released that disc. That was a good fake. It's realistic. But I think if you just released it, it would have been fine. Yeah, and the second one, the deep deep's ready for it. Yeah, again, throwing to someone's back. So he hasn't looked up, and you're just kind of expecting he will. 
But in fact, he stops his cut because he sees this, this defender's over here. Uh, right, we've got 20 minutes left of the of the stream. Uh, yeah, there's some. I thought there was some rule about a pre-stall as well. Just to go back to that quickly. Just yeah, look up the rules. Send it to the send the quote to the group group chat. We'll put it on the Facebook page. But yeah, one person needs to do it. Miscommunication. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, over eagerness to to make that throw as well. You see the the actual the gain against this zone was two swings and then then it opened up here. This pass here, okay, wasn't that far. Okay, it's like what fifteen yards. The actual gain is then with these little ones here. Okay. Now now we're in a really good position. Okay, but we're free over here. So don't don't get too eager. Don't get over eager to score against the zone just keep possession of the disc move it around keep the defenders moving keep changing the angles of attack we do get the disc back after a good dump and swing another unforced error we get a d and then a hospital pass that marcus saves and we score okay is this their turnover can't really see what happens can we Uh, ah, here we go. Someone's quoted my Miles has quoted the rules. That's a direct quote, is it, Miles, from the rule book? I'll let I'll let you guys read and digest that. Oh no. Uh, I think I think this this should be a throw and go. So if you're looking for space, then uh, pass the disc here, okay, and then attack this space here. A lot of space there. Yeah, the old give and go. But that should be the kind of mentality. It's like, oh, I'm not just going to make this pass. I can see space in front of you, so I'm going to attack that space. Yeah, have the disc and then throw it back to me. <laughs> yeah, the the option isn't the option isn't great because this guy wants it. Yeah, there's a defender that is aware to this, and immediately that's that's going to have to be a very accurate throw. And I think you maybe try to lead him a little bit away from the defender, but. Yeah, the defenders want to stop that. Well, they don't care about this, so just lefty scuba over the top here, you know, or something. Okay, that was a direct quote because Miles says his grammar isn't good enough to to write <laughs> the rules as they were laid out there. Mm. The force isn't, it's not clear which way the force is, um, but that's cool, we get the D, and then <laughs> the hospital pass. I like the reaction here. <laughs> um, technique wise, like low, low release is good for long throws. So you don't need to step forward so much, you can step out to the side a bit more, and then you're you're straightening your legs through your release and that that's not good mechanically so you want to keep those legs bent keep a stable base and release lower yeah that arm should be coming through a bit lower okay i'll skip i'll skip the defenses nice catch over there And we score! Hooray! Alright, skip this point and then we'll go on to... After the pull, this is the last point from this game. After the pull we move the disc very inefficiently. Jason has three open players but holds the disc and gives a dump instead. Save for Miles, he doesn't even look to the break and waits too long 
waits for two waits too much, ignoring two to three open players before giving away the disc. So I noticed I noticed the team you're playing against had very static offense. Sometimes you can kind of get get tricked into playing in the style of your opponents. You know, you, you, you kind of feed off their rhythm, start playing to their rhythm, rather than dictating the offense yourself. Talk about dictating on defense quite a lot, but not so much on offense. So dictating the rhythm, I mean, pass this disc, you know, it creates options. This is perfect time to throw and then, and then attack the space here. Yeah, throw the pass here, attack the space in front of the disc. This guy's free. He shouldn't be clearing out as well. Yeah, like, if you're free, don't run back towards the defenders. Uh, this cut almost brought the defender into D it. That's quite a risky throw, I and mean, that looks like it's really close to this guy. Okay, now hit this guy. Ah, just, yeah. If he... If he passed there and then and then ran attacking this space, that would be nice. Um, deep throw wouldn't be a bad option if this defender didn't exist, <laughs> but they definitely do exist. So yeah, it's a field field vision field vision mistake, I think. Um, but also just generally be happy at taking those small passes. And and following the disc, yeah. So when you when you throw, follow the disc in order to get the disc back. Uh, right, Daniel and Noah are getting in the car, and we'll follow on the phone. We've got thirteen minutes left. Hopefully, it will work on your phone. Okay, and we can skip defenses. So let's just go quickly through this. Uh, it's the thing again of, of being just being too close and not not forcing them to go backwards. Got to put some buffer in there. Um, buffer, I mean, you know, space in between you and the cutter. Uh, okay, seeing we've only got 12 minutes, I'm going to skip through a couple of points uh, and go straight to one that's got a yellow note on it. Uh, okay, after the pull, there are two players flat in the opposite sideline, poorly positioned. They think it's a zone. And then we have two dumps. Hmm, yeah, so there's a player over off the screen here, and there's more around here. When finally we remain with one, he moves before eye contact. Yeah. The, uh... Instead of facing downfield, face infield. Okay, and then and then see all of the players. Okay, so yeah, dump moves before the eye contact. So you're basically moving out of your position. Um, it does it? It does eventually. It does mean you open up space. Um, but you generally wait for eye contact before you make those moves as a dump. But there it says he likes the idea of the inside out hook. But <laughs> it's short and the cut angle is not ideal. Close to, too close to the perpendicular sideline. Well, that would be fake and not full speed. Mm, true. Um, I think the thrower, the thrower is way determined to to make that pass, you know, like doesn't really validate that with a believable fake. Just just wants to throw it deep. Like this is a nice move to shake off the defender. And that deep cut deep cut started from here. And slowed up a little bit. And then it's like, oh okay. And like that angle with the sideline just means the defender has got a big window where they can go and get it. Yeah, really, really want that deep, deep cut to continue going straight. 
that angle isn't bad so he wants to continue going this way so then the disc can go somewhere around here and then the, they can go in and attack it okay defense gets it time out and then after their time out you play a zone which does a good job for a while then they get through the cup the short deep doesn't stop the under left wing doesn't follow his person they score Um, okay, against the zone, we move the disc, but with three open people on the open side, we force a flick through the four-person cup. With Elijah, with Elijah wider and back, Marcus could have reached Jason with an easy and floating around backhand, or even a hammer. Sounds familiar, these, these around backhands that we're not taking. Yeah, I like I like that. That was good. He looked at his viable options. This is this is exactly the time. Throw and then run into the space. Yeah, keep the rhythm. As soon as as soon as that throw is not on, then boom, you can see the space. So so attack the space yourself. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a very tricky option. Like right between all the defenders. We have enough. We've got enough space over here to run through it and get the disc here where you've got two people in front of you. Lots of options available in front. Um, also, yeah, the throw choice. The amount of space here. Just um, put a hammer over. Yeah, hammer. Hammer! Okay. Looks like we're kind of lucky. Oh, this is, this is them doing a chocolate to chocolate. Tricky one. Uh, we've got eight minutes left. Um, against their four-person zone, after moving the disc to the trap side, we force a flick instead of giving a dump and swing to the opposite side. Uh, that's also a double team right there. Very close. Okay, I missed that. <clears throat> um, yeah, so... You, yeah, you don't want to move the disc that quickly to the trap side. If the force is here, you want to hang out with the disc on this side. This is like this is called the strong side. Okay, so it's beneficial to actually keep the disc in this side of the field. Okay, um, rather than pushing it over to the open side where the defenders are going to try and stop you getting it back. The reason why these guys are so free is because the defense, defense wants you to go over to the outside. And then once they're over there, then we've got the defenders all, all around. Um, yeah, and that, that throw choice in the very end. Yeah, it's a, it's a tight squeeze. I mean, maybe you should be looking deep. But yeah, you don't need to force these throws. Patience is key to zone offense. Okay, against their force person zone, four person zone again, we four person cup zone. We force a break instead of dump swing. Sounds familiar. Um, get the disc, move it across. Double team again. I really don't like double team. Yeah, so that, that could have been a bit earlier basically, that throw. And also here, like there's no need to be looking up open passes. Like take every open, take every open pass that you can. Keep the disc moving. Change the angles of attack. Increase your options. Make your players feel better as well. You know, everyone feels great when they get the disc in their hands and can pass it around a bit. So enable others to do that, and they'll enable you to do that as well. Um, right, this is the zone that you guys are playing. It just says our, lo our zone loses formation after an attempt at blocking. So there's going to be a D bid somewhere. Uh, there's only four minutes, four minutes left of the stream, and there's only a minute left of footage, so we'll be good.
Okay, can't see that very well. All right, last point. We move the disc, but can't swing. David should receive the dump a couple of yards back, so he can easily move the disc to the brake side. We ended up trapped and passed to a defender instead of keeping dump and swing. Walker should have, should Walker has to stay back instead of going up line. Ooh, ooh, camera. So I think the uh, it's actually a positioning thing. So when um, the whole time that he's got the disc here, yeah, I should probably take the dump a bit earlier. But somebody needs to be connected to this dump player. We need to have another player around here so that when the dump gets it then we're ready and we, we can't just be stopped by a player kind of in the general vicinity you know it needs to be a very clear option so yeah in general dumping and swinging keeping the disc moving is going to help you a lot um taking those open passes following the disc so passing and then running with the disc to that's nice isn't it grass shot yeah, passing the disc and then and then following it um, in order to get the disc back. Um, that's going to be really beneficial for you. Um, attack, keep attacking the brake side. Um, keep those fast transitions as well. So catch your D and then take the short passes to keep to to attack like a counter attack. Um, think about getting the disc moving at the beginning rather than setting up the, the stack so keep your eye on the thrower and know know to um to make that move onto the brake side especially very early on um so you can just keep the flow going um yeah and always always pass to the open person when there's when there's a poach uh we saw a lot of opportunities for the throwers to do realistic fakes and how that would have really helped move the defenders around to open up more options so keep that in mind um and yeah downfield cutters make sure you do your v cuts to to shake off your defenders before you follow through with those cuts um <clears throat> can, okay let's just have a quick read all right still you can find a way to send us those short points i want to see some of the points that we skipped in the stream yeah, Baderio can potentially sort that out. Uh, okay, yeah, you're welcome to everybody. Um, the video will be available for the rest of your teammates. Yeah, I think I think it's the same link as well. Uh, if you guys want to hear more analysis videos, then subscribe when we get to hear that little jingle again. Um, that would be great if you did. Um, thank you very much. This is very helpful. Yeah, I hope, I hope you really enjoyed the review uh, if you have any feedback for me then i really appreciate it um hope you really yeah i hope, hope you really really enjoyed it found it interesting hope you learned some things um everybody everybody in ultimate is improving all the time you know and you guys are very young so um you have like there's obviously a lot to learn and you'll be just be getting better and better and better the more you stick with it the more you kind of dedicate yourself to improving uh not just yourself but those around you um building a strong team um i really hope you do well in your championships um let me know how it goes valerio um thank you all for watching uh, i don't think there's anything else that i need to say um yeah hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you soon bye bye Oh yeah! Yes. Yes, you're good. Yes. Oh yeah! <laughs>